Hello children, I welcome you back to this portal of e-learning. I hope you are doing well, studying properly, doing something productive in a day. Today's topic that we are going to discuss in detail is from writing section. Your writing section, it has short compositions, long compositions. We are going to begin with the long compositions, how to weave around them, how to go about it the format, the rubrics, the points to remember, we'll discuss certain samples as well. And today we are going to learn how to write job applications or cover letter and biodata. This question is a little lengthier in comparison of the other long compositions because there are two things you are going to deal all together. The first is the cover letter and second is the biodata and both have different format. Seconding to it, it's the most important topic because all of us, we have to have a cover letter and a biodata that is also called as resume or curriculum YT because we're going to seek for one or the other job. So how to go about it? Let us begin. So what is a job application? Employment application or job application means the letter written for getting a job. It is the primary means of introducing the job seeker to the employer. So that means this is a document that will have all about the content the candidate holds and how he is fit for a certain job. Through the job application, job seeker offers his or her labor and service for a return. Therefore, the application for employment, it acts as a personal advertisement. These types of letters, they demand a very formal and precise treatment. So if we talk about the language, it has to be formal, pleasant, courteous, and also to the point. The format of job application or the cover letter, that's almost the same as of the forwarding letters. They are accompanied by detailed biodata or resume. The resume ought to include the name, date of birth, educational qualifications, experience, hobbies, present or expected salary, also the references with the contact details. However, the realistic resume, they are pretty different from the ones that we study as per the CBSC format. There is nothing wrong with this format, right? But when it comes to the realistic resumes, they are more detailed. I'm going to share with you all few formats of resumes other than the CBSC format. But when it comes to examination, you are going to have only and only the answer as per the format that has been prescribed by CBSC. You should stick to that. Let's discuss the rubrics. So we'll begin with the format, wherein you need to mention the sender's address, the date, receiver's address, the subject or the heading, salutation and complimentary close. So that means the format is same in all the formal letters. The format is of one mark. So if you miss out on anything, you lose half marks there. Then comes to content that is of three marks. Later on, the expression that is for two marks. For expression, it further splits into two. The first is grammatical accuracy. 
appropriate words and correct spelling. And the second is coherence and relevance of ideas and style. So total for this question in particular, six marks are allotted. Now let's begin discussing with the job application on the cover letter. So this is the first part of the answer. What cover letter is? The cover letter, it is the most important feature and the main part of the application. The format for the covering letter, it is similar to the format of a formal letter. It goes on like sender's address. So the sender address is usually put on the top left hand corner. Then the date and we will leave a line between the two. The sender's address is followed by the date just below it. This is the date on which the letter is being written. It is to be written in expanded form. We have discussed about it in grade 11. And I hope you remember that. There are only two formats that we follow writing the date in the formal letters. Then after leaving the line, receiver's address that we need to mark for. So whether to write to above the address depends on the writer's preference. But you may not go about it because it is the classical format. Make sure you write the official title, name, position of the receiver. For example, the manager, the principal, the administrator, that has to be at the top of the receiver's address. So it should be the first line of the address. Then comes subject, heading or title. So then we sum up the purpose of writing the letter in one line. This helps the receiver focus on the subject of the letter in one glance. It's important indeed to underline the subject. Next comes salutations. This is where you greet the person you are addressing the letter to, bearing in mind that it's a formal letter, so the greeting must be respectful, but not too personal. The general greetings used in formal letters are Sir or Madam or Ma'am. You can put a dear before it. Then let's come to the body. The main content part. This has to be divided in three paragraphs or two paragraphs if the letter is briefer. The tone of the content, it should be formal and the language should be direct, but do not use any flowery language, no sugar coated language. Another point to keep in mind is that the letter should be concise and to the point. It should be clear of the purpose. You should always be respectful and considerate in the language that you write. Paragraph number one. Begin the body of the letter by mentioning the source, as in from where you got to know about the job or of the information about the job. For example, from a newspaper, along with the day, date and advertisement number. Also mention the post you wish to apply for. Paragraph number two. Here, you are supposed to offer your candidature by briefing about your qualifications, achievements, previous experiences if there are any, and your strengths. In other words, this paragraph should be an answer to the question, how are you the perfect candidate for the job? Keep in mind that it should be to the point and clear, but you should not sound boastful of yourself. Paragraph number three and the last para, in this part of the body of the content, you are supposed to make a reference to the photograph, biodata, 
on curriculum IT and other detailed documents that you have enclosed. You can also appeal for one-on-one -on -one interview or face-to-face -face interaction or in-person interaction. End the body on a promising note, that is, looking forward to your positive response or looking ahead for a positive reply. Then comes the complimentary close. At the end of your letter, we write a complimentary closing. The words, yours faithfully, that we actually avoid, but CBSC they accept it, or yours sincerely, they are used. And then comes the signature. Here, finally, you sign your name. So while it comes to signature, it should not be very fancy. Your name has to be very clear. And then write your name in the block letters beneath the signature. This is how the recipient will know who is sending the letter. Mention the name given in the question paper. That you need to remember. Do not mention your personal details. That you need to remember. Because here, our task is to attempt the question. So when it comes to signature, you cannot go about that. This is my personal signature. That's how I'm going to do it. I repeat, it has to be very clearly written. It better be your name or your initials. And you need to mention the name that is given in the question paper. If there is no name given in the question paper, you better use X, Y, Z. Now let's come to the next part of it. The curriculum writing, the resume or bio data. So what's the format? The bio data or CV is generally divided into four parts. As in, the personal details, qualifications, experience and references. It goes like, you mark bio data as heading, then the personal details for the split in name of the candidate, father's name, the date of birth in expanded form, address, age, contact number, email address, nationality, marital status, then comes the qualifications. For qualifications, you need to put a table over there. So you have to split into five sections in all, wherein the first will say the name of the examination. For instance, AISSC E 10th, then 12th, then your graduation, post-graduation if it has been done. The second column will talk about the name of the board or the university from where you have done it. The third says about the name of the institution. The second last will inform about the year of passing the degree or the exam. And the last one will have the percentage. So it had been a grade, you can mark the grade as well. Now qualifications must be written in tabular form with the above mentioned heads that we have discussed. Then comes work experience. It should be written from latest to the oldest along with the duration. If there is any work experience, you can include it. Then the achievements in your school level, in college level. So achievements about the science exhibitions, about the sports, any national competition, international competition, or the state level achievement that you can mark over there. Then language is known. You can talk about your skills, weaknesses, hobbies, followed by the references. After we provide the contact information of at least two people under the heading references, we write a declaration, date, place, and at last, signature. We mark a note at the end, the resume, so that can be the part of the letter, or as an enclosure. 
Now there are certain tips to attempt it. Number one, make sure you follow the format and you double check for grammatical accuracy and spellings because they carry marks. Leave adequate number of lines between the paragraphs to make it look clean. Underlining the main points is very, very important. But it is advised to do it after finishing your exam. You can use a pencil and a scale for underlining, but that has to be done once you have completed all the answers. Presentation part, it's very important. You should stick to the format. Your answer has to be presentable, readable, so you should write in legible handwriting. Read a lot and lot of letters to get a better idea. Of that, I'm going to share with you in the word format. Later on, all kinds of samples under each header that you may have to attempt in the examination. Read them properly. Never mention any of your personal details. For instance, your name, the school name, or the address. Never write in one go. Make sure you follow the right format and divide your content in paragraphs. You are not supposed to use any slangs or short forms, any text message language, any WhatsApp language, no. So it has to be complete sentence and try not to exceed the prescribed word limit of 150 to 200 words. So if you are thinking, if you're going to write more, you're going to get more marks, it is not so. So it's always advisable to write to the point concise and ensure that you attempt all the questions. There are a few CBC guidelines that I would like to share with you all. No marks are to be awarded if only the format is given. So as far as you remember, in rubrics I have mentioned that there is one mark for the format. But that doesn't mean that you only write the format and you can have the marks. Credit should be given for the candidate's creativity in presentation of ideas. You should not be confused creativity over here with art, so you need not to draw anything over there. Use of both the traditional and the new format is permitted. So when we discuss that you can write two before the receiver's address, that is acceptable, but we better focus to the new format. Mixing all the formats, that is not permitted at all. So you can lose marks, you can get a zero directly. Job application and biodata is crucial, not only from the point of view of examination, but it is also important in the long run that we have already discussed. So while attempting the writing skills question, it is vital that the student follows the correct format. And for that, we present before you the proper format to enable you to write the ideal job application letter along with the biodata. So this is what we're going to do now. So this is the sample question that reads, Balvadya Public School, Vilai, urgently requires a postgraduate teacher to teach political science, for which they have placed an advertisement in the Vilai Express. You are Sanjay or Sanjana Sharma from 21 Vasant Marg Bhilai. Draft a letter including a CV applying for the advertised post. This is a question that had been in the board paper of the year 2018. And we'll write the cover letter, the job application and frame a biodata for the same. So this is the cover letter. We'll begin with the address that has already been mentioned in the question. You mark the date. And then in three lines, we write the address of the person who is going to receive it. The subject has to be concise, has to be crisp. In this case, it is application for the post of a postgraduate teacher. And we begin with the content. 
In response to your advertisement in the Bilai Express dated February 25th for the post of a political science teacher in your renowned school, I wish to offer my candidature. I am enclosing a copy of my biodata for your perusal and kind consideration. I am available for the interview on any day of your convenience. If given a chance to serve you, I assure you that I shall work with utmost sincerity and dedication up to your satisfaction. And then the complimentary close stating thank you, yours faithfully and the name given in the question. Then we mark enclosures. So the first is biodata, second is attested certificate, testimonial and references. So this is how it should look like. This is the half part of the question that we have attempted so far. And then you need to frame a biodata. I repeat again, this is the cover letter for the question. We also need to frame a biodata. And how we go about it? We provide the personal information first, the name, father's name that has not been mentioned in the question, so you should need, you need to create that. Then we mark the date of birth, the address, the contact information, the phone number and the email, marital status, age, nationality and academic qualifications. Academic qualification that we mentioned in the tabular form. So that is how we go about that. Then the hobbies, the strengths and two references. Now followed by an assignment. There are only two questions that I have given because I am going to share with you all a few more resumes along with the cover letters. The different language so that you're sure about it when you attempt it in the examination. The first question that says, you are Ram or Rajni living at 1 Rana Pratapma, New Delhi. Read the advertisement given below and apply for the job that suits you giving your biodata separately. Sang University requires lecturers in English and demonstrators in physics, chemistry and botany for their new campus at Panipat. Candidates with a minimum of five year experience alone can apply. Excellent command of English is a must. Excellent package and compensation for experienced candidates. Those interested may email to so and so email ID or mark their responses on box number 123, The Harbinger, New Delhi. So, when you read the question, you find that this is a requirement for lecturers or demonstrators. So before you mark the resume, you should be very clearly be knowing that what are the required qualifications, the education qualifications or the professional qualifications for so and so job. So you need to ensure about that. So this is something where you need to apply your common sense. The second question that reads, you are Prem or Parul of 16, TT Nagar Bhopal. You would like to apply for the post of marketing manager in a reputed firm in Mumbai. Write a letter to the public relations officer, the PROs, Shantek Enterprises, Mumbai, applying for the job. Write the letter in 125 to 150 words, giving your bio data. You need to write the letter, the cover letter, and also the bio data. I repeat again, you need to ensure the qualifications required for a certain job that is mentioned in the question. We should be knowing it well. More samples that as I have said already twice before, I'm going to upload in the Word doc for your perusal. If you have any queries, any questions, you can post in the comment tab always. I'll get back to you when it's possible. I wish you a happy learning. Thank you so much, everyone. If you have any queries, you can post to me anytime. Take care of yourself.